Thanks for that piece of lieutenant that's always uh, on his podcast. Bash us. Yeah. <laughs> All right, everybody. Eric Tim, your most complained cop, NYPD. This is New York's finest retired and filtered podcast. Of course, with me is the founder and the co-host of the podcast, John McCarry, retired lieutenant. And we got a great guest with us right now uh, who's become, honestly, he's become a friend to the podcast, a friend of myself, a friend to John, just a real likable guy, outstanding, mighty fuzz young. Uh, he's part of the movement. We are the people. He supports America. But ultimately, he supports the U.S. Constitution. So let's get right into it. Tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got involved into this movement, what it actually means to be We Are the People, and what is the message in supporting the U.S. Constitution? Thanks, Eric. Thanks, John. It's a pleasure to be here. In the words of Sal Greco, it's a pleasure to be here. Um, uh, my background is uh, I was a troubled kid from Ridgewood, Queens, that um, that realized how much damage I could do so quickly and to take that same energy and become productive. Um, in jail, I realized that I got my life together, gave my life to God and decided to take that same energy of destruction and make myself productive and uh, work with people, work with people in the community. And uh, as you guys know, the world started changing very quickly. Uh, when we're in the matrix, we want to just pay attention to what we're doing day to day. But then, you know, you see what's going on in the news, see what's going on in the neighborhood, things, things the world wasn't right. So uh, I immediately kicked into gear and I started reading and, and learning. It was a guerrilla learning calculus, but um, I wanted to learn about rights and freedom. And um, what a deep dive that was, because I realized that none of us know our rights. No, none of us know what our God given rights are. We, a lot of us still say we have constitutional rights. So uh, I went down that road, and and that was the beginning of my journey. So what, what would you say is the pivotal point where you're like, you know what, this is where I'm going to direct my energy? Like, what what specifically? Like, what was it? Was it a time? Was it COVID? Was it the mandates? Was it something else? Like, what was that? Okay, so so I guess it it, it all started with with COVID. Um, are we allowed to say the c word? Is is that all right? The, you could say COVID. Oh, on my show, I got, I already got flagged already, guys. Uh, yeah, so the COVID started it, and um, I, I realized like this was gonna, this was affecting the city workers, and I'm not a city worker, but I realized that if it's bothering the city workers and then the mandates were coming down, it's gonna affect the neighbor, and I don't need it for it to affect me personally for me to understand that we all got that we all have a responsibility as neighbors to get involved. So that was the beginning of it. Um, I didn't know what to do. It was just a lot of emotion, right? So um, we had to look for solutions. And and we started doing, uh, as you guys know, we started doing the sit-ins and rallies. And uh, we were at the, the Freedom Convoy with the, with, with the trucks. And I was at J6. I literally did the whole tour in the Freedom Movement. Um, I've been at every aspect of the Freedom Movement in New York City. Yeah, outstanding for for the our fans that are out there right now, supporters watching this particular show, this episode. Mighty Fuzz Young, he has his own podcast. Also, um, he does a fantastic job. Great interviewer himself. John was on his show. If you have an opportunity, check it out. And uh, when I saw John's show, because John went on first, I said, "Wow, I don't know him, but I like him." And sure enough, I went on your show, and uh, we become great friends. And uh, you're just an awesome human being, brother. You know, it's great you're saying you were a troubled kid and, and look what you fermented into. And it just shows that everyone deserves a second chance and what you could do with a positive attitude and mindset. So let's talk about U.S. Constitution and government, because what it means to support the U.S. Constitution, does that mean that you are you want more government, less government, especially at the point where we are right now? What is your perception when it comes to government and the people? I appreciate that question, Eric. Um, so essentially, the, the first thing we have to understand is that we have God-given rights. John McCary uh, has been doing a great job pointing that out. Uh, kudos to you, John. Um, God-given rights means that our rights do not come from a piece of paper called the Constitution. Our rights come from our creator. If you don't believe in a creator, they come from worms, so they come from nature. Whatever you get to choose, that's your choice as a living soul. And um, so men have came together and created a constitution. The constitution was the limitation of government. So it's not our rights, but it's actual limitation, the description of the job of our public servants. And that's that's really the basis of 
what I think Americans need to understand that this country was founded on us being the bosses. In other, we've been ruled in, in Great Britain, ruled in Rome, and this country was different. When our forefathers came together, uh, they said, we will be ruled by our creator and we, the people, and that's the importance of we, the people, have the power and the power is in the pen. The power is in knowing our rights and we are kings of our castles. And as we come together, that's what we, the people are. So, I, you know, I started speaking out around the same time as you. I started speaking out on social media. And to me, what I saw was that politicians are handled with kid gloves and treated as if they're kings and queens in society and nobody even questions them on basic questions and fears them. So I started doing that on social media. I started doing that. I started advocating to vote our way out of this. But when I started to interact with you particularly, you started talking a lot about it's not just at election time. We have to hold them accountable all the time. So what are the ways that we could hold elected officials, officials accountable in between election periods? Okay. The first thing we have to understand is now that we have the basis of the country that, we, like you said, we have the power. Um, really think about it, right? We all love America. We're all patriotic to America. Uh, is it really patriotic to believe that two to four years on one day when you go voting is so we're going to keep our freedom? Freedom is like a muscle. And if you don't protect it, it atrophies. And it's very important that we all understand, that, especially alpha men in this time. I, um, I, what we are doing here and other states are doing, other counties, is the first thing is to understand the power is local. In our in our uh, counties, we have this process that we're doing called the administrative process. Uh, it's very similar to the summonses that police do, um, where the court is on paper. We start by contracting the oath and the acceptance of the oath of office. The second step is to send a notice of violation. Third step is the default notice with opportunity to cure. And the fourth is the default with consent to judgment. And when we make this step, now we present that to the judge and let the judge look at that process and rule on that process. And that's what the people can do. But remember, we don't do this because we don't like them as Democrats or we don't like them as Republicans. We do this when the oath has been broken. And I'm here to tell your audience that there's treason happening in every single county in this country. First of all, I, you know, I love your analogy that you gave. It's, it's outstanding. And, and, you know, again, I, I, I mean, I was impressed by your interviewing skills and the passion that you have when you talk about the oath. And I think that it could be misconstrued that you're not supporting law enforcement and supporting politicians when you say we the people, but you actually are because you're supporting the, the the correlation of law enforcement politicians to we are the people. And I, I, I love the fact that you're saying we the people need to hold these politicians accountable because it's it's come to the perception where some of these politicians believe that they should be served by the people. So John and I both were in law enforcement, NYPD, and you talked about the oath. It's something we talked about. You mentioned that you and I spoke about this online, offline, that Cops don't really understand their oath and how important it actually is. That's why, so John, I said, we have to bring him on here. Of course, you've been a, a, a great guy you know, and a good friend now. So when we talk about the oath that the cops have to take, what is your perception of what it means a cop taking that oath? And what should they understand about the oath that they take in correlation to the U.S. Constitution in reference to their job as a local law enforcement officer? Okay. so. The first thing we have to understand that there's there's another system running. And if we can do an extended video one day, extended interview, I'd like to get into the second part of this because there's it's it's a lot of information that we're squeezing in. Uh, we have to understand that uh, the reason you take that oath is to make sure that you protect the supreme law of the land. Um, anything that goes against that supreme law of the land is color of law. So when we get down to the states, right, and the states or or, or vice versa, um, if they go against these laws that we create in the charter, for instance, if you guys know, there are certain laws, I can't think of one off the, but they might contradict the state constitution. Now you're in this where it's their discretion by officer uh, or judge local judge where they're making a distinction amongst the charter or the state. Now, what if that goes against the state constitution? This is the importance of the oath because this is what protects our freedoms, guys. Um, 
And 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 what I what I really want to nail down here, guys, is that Eric, you you have taken an oath to the Constitution in the military and law enforcement. John, you in law enforcement. I ask you, right, when you when you take that oath, it you you're going to protect us foreign and domestic. What would a country, and may I ask a question, what would a country have to do for it to violate domestically? What would a country or an administration would have to do for mm-hmm. anybody that has taken that oath to uphold the domestic part? You know, I like to answer that question. Absolutely. I think it's actually happening right now. We see the legislators, the politicians that we have throughout the country, especially Democratic cities. I believe they have violated their oath because they've created law that actually goes against law and order. It doesn't even make sense. It doesn't have common sense. It doesn't oblige the societal norms. We have a criminal first society. John, I speak about that all the time, where victims have become the second class citizen. We're addressing the small 10 percentage of the country, which is the criminal society, to make sure that their rights are upheld. And we're not up- upholding the rights of good um, good American citizens that deserve the U.S. Constitution upheld, that they deserve common sense. What's going on with these politicians right now, have they emasculated police departments throughout the country, to me, is a complete violation of the oath. It's a violation of the Constitution. Yeah, 100%. And, and you know, that's why I'm, I'm glad you guys asked me to come on, man, because I, I that's... We agree on a lot. We agree on a lot. And I and I think if we get this information out to people and just the main thing is the, the alpha the alpha men to really just talk about this. It's education. It almost sounds aggressive. It almost sounds like we're saying to get involved like uh some type of violent act, but we're not doing that. We just gotta know our rights. We have a country of 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 citizens that don't know their rights. So this is a very exciting time. I think this will be the most but once the people learn their rights, this will be the most patriotic time in history, something like 1776, if not better. So Fuzz, I, I don't want to I don't want to back off this subject a little, but I do want to I, I do want to talk a little bit about the police's role in all this and your feelings personally about the police, because I'll tell you the first time I saw you, you were yelling at the picket line. You were yelling when uh, you were yelling at the NYPD at a protest when you went to Staten Island and you were yelling at the cops, the police in particular, and you were saying, what do you have to do to violate? Like, what does it take for you to not violate your oath? Something along those lines. And I was like, I want to talk to that guy. And then I, <laughs> cause I, I, cause I, I feel you. And, and, and there's a lot of things that I said about that, but I think it's a very nuanced conversation. Right. Sure, so I, sure. And I think, you know, we could be far apart on it, but we need to come together and, and understand it as, as a country and as a people. So, like, just initially, in layman's terms, what do you think about cops growing up? What do you think about them now? You build a profile, John. Uh, I I uh, <laughs> I told my wife you were going to ask that. Uh, it's funny. <laughs> So I yeah I grew up hating <laughs> cops, bro. I hate it. That's why I'm doing this. I'm out for you guys. Um, I have I have no problems with law enforcement like yourself, John. You said it uh, uh very well on on Tramel's show. Shout out to Tramel. Um, that you like myself w- was affected by the quota system, right? Pulled against the wall. I um, you say it where there's like you know it's part of policing. I look at that slightly different, but I think that's where we differ, uh, especially now that I know the rights. Um, I have nothing against police. I, I'm friends with a lot of police in the mandates. I don't, I don't, I say this just to make the point, not to, but we helped a lot of police keep their jobs, you know? So there's nothing like, I'm not, I don't have an NWA album that I listen to, you know, after police and not like that. It was honestly, uh, my main thing is that what, where the conflict with cops came was when I started learning the rights. So it really didn't start until I learned about you know, upholding your oath and how everybody doesn't know their oath. And I started asking cops, hey, what's the Sixth Amendment? Here, just just for example, and this is just for a teaching moment because I didn't know it. Like like John or Eric, what's the Seventh Amendment? What's the Ninth Amendment? What is it? Hey, you just start spitting out the numbers. I wouldn't be able to answer you. I you know what I mean? I can tell you. I can tell you the Fourth Amendment. <laughs> I bet you're good. I bet you're good. Well, uh, you should you should know the eighth too, though. That's uh, I believe that's excessive uh, excessive bail and, and uh, excessive bail and fines. Uh, but you, to, that's the point, and neither does my people that I live with. My neighbors don't know it, and that's what should bring us together, guys. 
That's what should bring us together. Nobody, what are we fighting for? What are we protecting? The oath is like a ritual being done at your job. Like, oh, I guess I just got to do this as part of the job. But we don't know what we're taking it to. And 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 the people in the military, like yourself, Eric, you know, I um, what I was yelling, what to answer your question, John, uh, what I was yelling was that you don't you don't serve the people. I said you serve the state. You serve the new world order. The new world order. Ooh, scary, scary, scary. And uh, this is c- conspiracy, right? This is stuff. This is WWF, right? This is stuff that we people try to stay away from on their shows. But I'm going to teach. I, I would like, if you give me the platform, I would like to teach, okay? We have a dollar bill right here. Here is the dollar bill, guys. We use it every day when we go to the store, Okay. We see this. We always see the pyramid. We know about that. What is that? Is it Masonic? We don't know. But there's Latin there. There's Latin, guys. And in that Latin says the birth. The birth of a new world order. They're announcing the birth of a new world order. It's on your dollar bill. It's not it's not. um, This is a takeover of the country. And I'll get into the weeds here. In 1871, the country was taken over by bankers and turned America into a corporation. How they turned us into from living souls to literal on paper products, chattel entities. How they did this was if you guys have your license on you, if in your wallet, you'll see your names in all caps. They had to transfer your living soul to a paper self. This happened in 1871, guys. This is why the the license, the birth certificate, the ID program in 1876, a year after the revolution, we were tagged and bagged a long time ago. This is bigger than Republican and Democrat. Um, There probably could have been a better transition to this information, but every American needs to know what's happening, why we have these identifications. It's not for your safety. Government, it's not your responsibility, your government, to keep you safe. It's our God-given responsibility to keep us safe. It's our God-given to understand what has happened in the true history of this country. And and that's that's the big secret, guys. So before you answer this question, I just want you to keep in mind. I, I just want would it be fair to say that the US Constitution governs all law? And, and with that being said, and the reason why I say that, even since I was in the Marine Corps. It's always been talked about that there's different ways to interpret the Second Amendment. You know, is it all American citizens have the right to bear arms? Was it meant for militia? I I see you smile, and I definitely feel that you probably have, you know, a a perspicacious mindset when it comes to the Second Amendment. And then you talked about the separation between U.S. Constitution and state, right? Because every state has their different gun laws, and even down to local municipality. So what, what is your uh, viewpoint on how the Second Amendment was written? Because even there's a there's a former Navy SEAL, I'm trying to remember his name, but he's all over social media. And he always talks about, he says he won't listen to the U.S. government to have a permit. He says the Second Amendment gives him the right and that he will, ca- he will carry a firearm anywhere across any state lines. And that's his God-given right. So uh, yeah. if, I know that's a lot of stuff, but if you could answer no, on that, because I've always been, no, no, I've here. always I'm been intrigued by it. I, I, I'm, I'm here. It's your barbecue, and I, and I love the question, Eric. I, this needs to be talked about. Like we have to really, guys. What look what's happening in the country? I, I asked you what, what, what it would take if, uh, for the oath that you took as, as a man in military. What would a country have to do for, for, for the men in, in, in uniform to kick into gear? Right, it's happening. It's happening, guys. The country is, it's called fifth generational warfare. And this is a country that's rocking us to sleep as they encroach. They're circling the wagons. We're all waiting for it. Think about it. Think about the psychology in this genius cunning. To answer your question, uh, we, we have to remember we are under years of propaganda. We are on the years of Pepsi Cola patriotism. The idea of patriotism of our forefathers was the freedom of their countrymen, not government. We have to be able to we love we love our country. We love freedom. We agree on that. We don't have to go any further out. Nobody hates the country. Nobody wants communism. But if we don't fix it, we leave the power in the government. The power was in the people. 
It's in the Declaration of Independence to answer your question on guns. I believe that every man, woman is allowed to get a gun to protect their house uh, without any permission of any man, that they have the God given right to protect their home. I true, I believe that. Yes. 100 uh, percent of the militia part. I actually did a video on the militia part. The militia part's interesting because the reason of the militia and why they had that in there was because the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists didn't get along. So when they were writing the Constitution, remember, we won in 1776, but it took 13 years to, to have uh, George Washington in. They had to write the Constitution. There was fighting amongst the Federalists and the Anti-Federalists. The Federalists wanted a Constitution. The Anti-Federalists just wanted God-given rights and states' rights. Leave our state alone. If we need to come together to fight England, we will do so. But as we just want states' rights, the, the agreement that was made 13 years later after the Revolutionary War was that every state would have a well regulated militia that militia was not not the national guard it was the book the the butcher the baker the candlestick maker you would never know who they were that was the importance because they were the last line of defense this is why the feds don't like the militias because people don't know who they are how they get around it though this is how cunning they are they made the gun registry they they don't gotta worry about the militias just register your guns it's for your safety Look how genius these people are, bro. This is our government. This is who we're paying taxes to. So you guys are going far. I'm not going to lie. You guys are going far. I understand where you're going, and I understand what you're saying. Come on out, baby. Listen, I Come get it. But I'm, 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 like, I'm saying we're talking to regular people now. We're talking to people. We've all been rocked to sleep, all of us. I agree with you. Right, I mean, right. Even myself. We've all been indoctrinated to believe things. I do. I think the Constitution is the ultimate law of the land. I do. I agree with you. I think that I think that a lot of what you're saying is true. That that Second Amendment says right there will not be will not be infringed. Right? Will not be infringed. It says it right there on, on paper. Right. Um, and we all uphold our oath to it. Yet we follow all these laws every day about a lot of different things, driver's licenses, having insurance for our vehicles, a million different things, right? So my point is this, like what, where do we start? I mean, cause we're lost right now. We're lost right now. And I think where I agree the most and I, where I have the most common ground with the whole du jour movement is we need to hold our elected officials accountable in order to restore the power back. Yeah. Like, so, you know, that's my thing. It's like, how do we like specifically, like what, what do you recommend for a regular citizen? They have a city council person. They have a state assembly person. They have a congressman or a congresswoman and they ignore you. Yep. Yeah. And by design, remember, let's 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 uh, be frank, guys. We have a system that has ignored the people for a long time. It's in their best interest to protect each other at this point, even if somebody had a conscious or even there's neglect. I'm, I'm, I'm going to get in trouble for telling the story, but I will. Uh, there is a uh, politician in Staten Island that was in Albany and the the jour girls went up to him and this guy thinks he's hot shit. Uh, and they and he said, yeah, we're a Democratic Republic. And the du jour ladies, they're like, listen, let me tell you, let me just give a big shout out to these ladies, Ta Taino women, white women, uh, black women, like the, the most inspirational people. They don't do this for any fanfare. They don't do this for any attention. No one will ever know their names. And they literally learn every single day, three to five days a week, nonstop, zero dollars, guys, to learn how to fix New York. And I just I just want to give them a shout out. Um they were with this politician and they fought over this. And he was like, you know, I'm a lawyer, right? You know, I'm the politician, right? And then literally when we, all the stuff was happening in Staten Island, he stood on a, he stood on a, a, a podium and goes, yeah, we are a constitutional Republic. And he was checked. 
by the Dijon women. So I just want to give a shout out to them. To answer your question, sir, um, we have to we have to get educated. That's why I always say that education is the cure. We the people are the cure. That's what I mean by that, guys. And it starts with knowing our rights. That's the base. It's very, I'm going to repeat them because it's important. When we know our rights, we know who we are. We know that we are not under the helm or the uh, mercy of government. We have to get out of that. It's hard. It's hard. And that's why people uh, get offended with the police being public servants. I'm not saying they don't do their job when there's a crime. They do their job when there's a crime. But being a public servant is an honorable job because you give up your God-given rights to protect our God-given rights. And they, like Eric says, they need to be respected again. But once we get them aligned with they know their rights, they know how to protect it, the people know their rights, for people getting involved locally, you could start committees of safety. The way the system was worked worked was we went by common law. The common law is not old law. I uh, there are people winning with common law all over this country. I have case law on common law. I can refer to. I posted one today on my page. Uh, people are lazy. They don't want to learn, and they make snapshots. And it's really it's really uh, takes away from what's happening in this country. People are getting success in all different states. New Hampshire. Guys, the people of New Hampshire are giving direction to the congresswoman of, of New Hampshire. I'm in contact with the people that are, are involved in that. In Georgia, it's happening. It's happening in Arizona. Mickey Klain, I sent you guys a video. Hope you guys watched it. Uh, she is killing it. And um, she has the sheriff. So the people get involved locally. They, hold, they do that administrative process that I broke down. at uh, the three-step process. And then they bring it to the judge. The judge makes a ruling and the sheriff who's supposed to work for the people. And, and there are bad sheriffs too across this country that are on the take, but the ones that are good, that, that uphold their oath enforce mm -hmm. the ruling. Mm -hmm. Now the people are directly working with the system the way it was supposed to. We're not at the mercy of the system. What are they going to throw at us next? We're supposed to, this is a government for the people by the people. The words, we like the words, but we don't and like understand the words. So it's a matter of getting involved locally, starting these committees of safety, and getting educated. Uh, hey, listen, it's outstanding, the stuff that you're saying. Honestly, I'm so intrigued. I could listen to you for hours. And I have to be honest, I'm learning a lot, too, sitting here. And I was actually a history major in college. And while I was in the Marine Corps and uh, just hearing some of the history that you're saying, uh, you know, I have to go back and look at it myself. But it's quite interesting because when I was on your podcast, we talked about Supreme. We talked about Supreme Court cases because, you know, I was explained that that was the, uh, the foundation of intrusive police work was understanding case law. That was the ability to do intrusive police work. <clears throat> and you had mentioned earlier offline that the judges can change Supreme Court case, which falls under the U.S. Constitution, which is right. You're accurate. So I'm working under the U.S. Constitution, and I assimilate police work to Supreme Court cases that have been presided on. But even then, those cases could then go to a judge, and those could be overturned by a different judge because of their interpretation. So the U.S. Constitution, we could, always, we could say, is evolving. Do you believe that the U.S. Constitution is an evolving doctrine? And how do you explain, is that man's law or God's law? And what it does it mean? What is the difference between man's law and God's law? Oh, thank you. Thank you for this question, brother. Okay. Uh, it's it, There's two parts you asked. I, I, I want to get to the, if you don't mind, I want to do it in reverse. Uh, God's law is not written by men, right? God's law is uh, for us, me, brother John. Uh, oh, you too, brother. It's the Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments is, is your God-given rights, guys, for us. That's what we chose as our creator. Um, there's innate, there's an innate understanding in humans, um, and everybody picks their line. There's, you know, we have Muslim brothers. Nobody ever forces in, in, in the original system. Uh, they did freedom of religion because some of the forefathers uh, were about logic and reason. When we think of that, we think of Thomas Paine, right? Like common, he wrote Common Sense, which was gave basically the playbook before George Washington executed. And um, so knowing your law, right, and going by that law, um, and then when they wrote the Constitution, it's it, it kind of mirrors a lot of Deuteron or Deuteronomy, which is also in the Old Testament, um, and, and it was reflective of that. So 
that's what we that's the first thing we got to kind of like relearn like the constitution is not okay this is agreed upon man law because then that could change and that's why you're asking that question um when it comes to the constitution and that's a great question um for the next video i would love to come back on if you guys didn't mind because we can spend the whole interview on the 14th amendment the 14th Amendment is going to blow your mind because the 14th Amendment, like Edward, uh, your friend Edward, Edmund, what was the guy you just Edward, spoke uh, Edward Raymond. Great yeah. guy. I would love, uh, shout out to him. I would love to build with you, sir, if you're watching this. Um, he brought up the 14th Amendment as like a protective uh, for black people to get rights, right? All rights. But what they did was they took our God-given rights and converted them into government privileges for the word citizens guys and turned us into citizens which they made the corporation and this was the beginning because if you watch what happens in history this is if you don't learn history it, it's bound to repeat itself they are able to do this because we don't know our history then they came out with the corporation then they came out with the id program and we became chattel entities they literally converted us into a paper fiction and we kind of are willing participants of this corporate democracy that our pol that our politicians are playing in. That's why they're not listening to answer your question, John. That's why they're not listening. They're playing into a game that they may not even know. I, I don't believe it's sinister and as sinister. I believe these people don't know. I think we're all going, listen, we're a republic. Why are we acting like the 51 can outvote the 49 if we have individual rights in a republic? Which society did we grow up in? One that if the if the Democrats win, we're at that if the mercy of them? Or did we grow up in a republic where we had individual rights? We grew up in the first one, but it's not supposed to be like that. A republic is a, to protect your individual rights, meaning no matter who's in, you have certain rights that are protected and cannot be infringed on. And that's not what we're living in because they're playing in this corporate democracy. So citizens a dirty word then? It's funny. Words matter, bro. I know. I know. I know. I know this is crazy. I know, guys. Uh, Black Laws Dictionary. How about this? Black Laws Dictionary. Look up the definition of person, and uh, you'll you you will see there's the words matter in different uh, different things, and and that's they literally turned us into a paper fiction. Do you guys have your licenses on you? Do you have a wallet on you at all? I don't. I don't. You don't have your wallet on you? Yeah. You I always have, have it. Always. All right. Always. You, all right. If, you, if you look at it right now, you'll see your name in all caps. That's not the way your mama I'll, wrote it. Don't show I'll your license. I'll take a look right now. Don't show your license. I'm not going to go But take a look, see, bro, or your credit card. I'm, I'm taking a look at it right now. Man, all caps. You're baby. right. You're right. You're right. You know, I've heard that That's before, it. and I never understood what's like – what exactly that means uh, as far as why is it all on caps versus lowercase? Would that make a difference? It, 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 I know. I know. And, and that's that's that it's this is how crazy this is. It creates a fictional corporation of yourself. And this is what they're running in in their legal ease. They're running a legal system, not a lawful system, bro. And and it trickles down even to the cops. And this is why the cops become more of a revenue, a revenue collector than they do policing. Mm -hmm. Think about it, guys. You guys are, you guys are, the, you know, they got you guys in one hand, you're saving the neighborhood. On the hand, you're filling quotas and making money for the state. And it's not supposed to be. Imagine if we kept the good and not the bad. The bad part is part of the corporate fiction, the, the collecting for the city. Could you explain this, though? What, what's a sovereign society? Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, <laughs> I, let's, let's I, I don't mean to fox you in. No, 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 please, please do, please do, um, please do, brother. I we need to talk about it because I know there's a an ex cop watching this going, oh, he's a sovereign citizen. He's probably gonna drive down Myrtle Avenue without his license, and they're gonna pull him out the fucking car. Uh, that's not happening, guys. That's not that's not what we're talking <laughs> about here. We're talking about history. This could be proven. You can look this up if anybody wants to learn about what I am talking about. Um, I, I bought these for Christmas in the stocking for John McCary when he came by, I got him three books. I know he didn't even open one of them. Uh, but the red one, John, Merry Christmas, John. Uh, and I, Eric, I bought a few too. I know you're not at home yet, but, um, thank you so much. Thank you. 
No, of course, brother. Listen, the best gift we can give each other is education. And and please do the same for me, bro. You want me to learn? We're brothers. Please give me books. Teach me, bro. I'm teachable. I'm learnable. Um, so we have the red one, which is meet your strawman. And it will it will show you the history of our country become a corporation in 1871, the act of 1871. And you will see that after that is when the world wars happen. After that, the taxes, after the civil war, uh, uh, everything, bro. You start to see this rollout because remember, we fought over a 3% tax, T-tax. How did we start paying taxes again? It's all at the Civil War. Something happened. The, the, the reason why the 14th, we're jumping around a little bit, but the reason why the 14th Amendment is such a great education is because 10 of those states was at gunpoint. The country was overthrown. The history's there. Just we're all doing uh, breaded circus and we're not paying attention. We're just running. We're running in the present. The cops are worried about are there drugs on the block or this or that. And, and, and none of this is being taught to any of us. We're not taught our rights in school. We're not by design. You guys are not taught what you're taking all to. By design, we're all being played. That's why we should all come together. So, so what's a so what's a perfect society then? Like, because you know, like, what do we? What's the what's the goal? Like, that's my question. Because, like, a lot of things. Like, I, I I've ran into people that consider themselves sovereign. Right? I don't need this. I don't need that. And listen, and I, 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 I'm a free thinking person. So a lot of things that they say make mm. sense to me, but then I'm like, well, who's paying for the roads? Who's paying for this? Who's paying for that? Right? Like, I'm like, That's my favorite one. That's my favorite one too. Yeah. So, so I'm not, I want to say once again, I want to say once again, I am not a sovereign citizen. That's an oxymoron. How can you be sovereign and a citizen? Right. Um, I'm, I'm, my car has licenses on it. Uh, (laughs) What we're talking about here is for me, at least is just pushing back the, the, the country to its original Republic, other than obviously the slave, the, the, uh, the constitution, obviously the slave one third slaves and all that, obviously out. We, the people that step into our power, we come together collectively. Uh, all the communities are upset. The cops are upset. The military's upset. Like, and we're all like, we're looking, we're asking, it's like Stockholm syndrome. Hey government, but don't worry, government's going to fix it. And, and like I was telling you, John, this is what I was trying to say. If we just have one terrorist attack that we're just waiting for in New York, we're all going to get behind government again to, to find the solution. It's, it's by design. This is the game plan of nine 11. The, for me, uh, the society would go back to its state's rights. Right now we have a lot of federal money going all over the place. Taxes going all over the place. What if, we just worried about each and every state and we worried about the affairs in every state. Let's just do that. Um, I would like for it to be in the county. So it reflects kind of like your view on, um, on policing. We, we agree. And I, that policing should reflect its neighborhood. Right. Um, then, then shouldn't, shouldn't the money too, like, shouldn't we keep the money inside the areas, uh, the, the counties, the local mm. government? So then if there's any hiccups, we can fix it directly. It's not a trickle down where everything's compartmentalized. And yeah, the president, we might fix the president, but the five guys under him are bad. You know, it's like, how do we stop the bleeding? How do we stop the bleeding? And I believe states' rights is where it's at. I'm blown away and really intrigued. Like we always heard this term since we grew up as kids, and you're actually making me think about it right now, and and actually try to get a good understanding. Right, we would always hear about the separation of church and state. So, with that being said, do you think that we can have the U.S. Constitution under God and also have man's law? Is it necessary to have man's law under God, or do you think that man's law is just completely manufactured? to have control as government. So when we speak of man's law, like, like for instance, common law, right? Common law would be an understanding for the society, right? So how are we going to live amongst each other? That's kind of like, we're trying to patch that up, right? How do we live amongst each other? What type of rules? And, and, and there are, and the common law, a couple of the understandings of the common law is as long as there's no um, victim, uh, any property or anything like that is hurt. There's real no reason to have any infraction with cops. This 
this policing should be for law enforcement for criminals. If we had you guys not collecting uh, money wise or, or, you know, um, I know you were saying about the minor crimes. I don't know what minor crimes you were speaking about, um, but if it's a crime, it, it has to be handled. Right. Huh? But yes, Crystal, uh, I'm sorry. My wife, she's uh, it's my PR lady here, guys, ladies and gentlemen, give her a shout out, Crystal. Uh, <laughs> so we, we have, uh, to just less less cops. So in in the way that um, uh, the guy Edmund was saying that it's true, we need less contact because they're law enforcement with guns. But at the same time, how do we fix the society? And this is where we also agree we have a sick society. But I believe that if we can we can take all this information that we're learning, everybody's waking up. We can fix this over time. If nobody's willing to put the work in, if it takes 10 years, if it takes 20 years to fix the society, because leaving it on the cops is not fair to any of you. We just watched the video before we started, and I watch you guys break down play by play things I would never see because I'm not a cop. It's unfair to you. It's unfair to us. Uh, we have a sick society. Uh, we, but we also have to re remember, too, there's another element. It's like the Coliseum. Let's say we're in the Coliseum and me and Eric are going to have a fist fight, right? And we go, you know what? We're sick of fighting for the people in the Coliseum. So what does Caesar do? Caesar throws a lion in there. Now we got to fight the lion. And that's what's happening. We Like, oh, you guys are kind of like agreeing all of a sudden. We'll just let in 11 million people. We're going to house them in your neighborhood and then go, oops, there's a terrorist attack coming. I don't know how it happened. We got to band together. Maybe you let 11 million people into the country. You, you, you see, like, they are letting the lion into the Coliseum. It's the government every time. The government has to be until the president is pulled out for treason. And this mayor, the, we just lost that gentleman in Massapequa. How is this mayor not out for treason? How we we are we are now have the law enforcement, the rank and file, protecting and providing for people that are not citizens here. And 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 one day, Eric Adams is going to come out. Get, hold me accountable for this. You know what, you know what, citizens of New York? It's, you're right. You shouldn't have to pay for it no more. I'm letting them all out. And then what did the rank and file do? Essentially, aided and abetted, not by choice. They were just following orders. The government did this. And, and we can't run from the mirror. We have to come together. We have to realize that we're following orders from criminals who do not love this country, want chaos to bring in their solution. And that's what's happening in this country. That was deep, bro. And you're 100% right. I agree. I agree with you a thousand percent. And I always say, I say it a lot. I say it a lot different, but I say this is politically created. Any, any problem that you hand me, I'm like, it's politically created. It's politically created. It always goes back to the state legislator, the city, the city council, the mayor, the president. Every problem that we've had, crime, rising crime, the, the out of control spending, inflation, the, the uh, people flooding our borders, coming into our cities, our money being thrown to the wolves, the mandates, everything politically created. And and honestly, you're right. And and they they do not. The political class are elites. They're elite. I, I say all the time. I say all the time. And I don't care who gets offended by it. I'm black. <laughs> Eric, Adams. Eric Adams is a latte liberal. He's a limousine driving liberal. He's an elitist. He does not care about the people. The mandates opened my eyes to how little the elite care about us. They care none about us. They don't care about if your kids are getting fed. They don't care if your kids have health care. They don't care if you're living in the street. They don't care about anything. And 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 you're 100% right. They are public servants, just like the cops are public servants. And I agree with you. They need to be reminded that they are public servants and they do serve us. So that's why I do support the DeJour movement, because I think that I am I, I need a lot more education and so do a lot of other people, because I feel like I'm light years ahead of people that I speak to politically, light years ahead of them. And I'm still dumb. You know what I mean? And and like I, I, I think it's a bigger movement. So that's why I applaud your podcast. I applaud you going out there on social media every day 
and 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 doing that. I mean, I, it really it's it's something that needs to be done. Something that needs to be talked about. I I appreciate you guys, man, and I just I just want to say that um watching what you guys are doing, uh, you guys already gave so much to this to the city to New York. Uh, you also fought for our country, Eric. And I, I, I tell this to John privately, but I want to say this publicly. I believe uh, your serving has just begun and what you guys are about to do and what you guys are evolving to. You guys have my full support. Whatever you guys need, time, talent, or treasure, I'm here for you guys. I consider you guys my brothers. And um, I'm looking forward to restoring the Republic with you guys. Dude, absolutely. I love the line that you always say. Every time I speak to you, you're always so positive. Like, let's build together, build together. And that's the key word. You keep saying together. We are the people. We are. Whether you're a cop or if you're if, if you're an everyday person, whatever your job is, we are the people, the people that support this country. I agree with you. I agree with everything you're saying. And I honestly, I really be when I learned, I listened to you and I learned a lot. I learned a lot today. And that's why I, I love, you know, having friends with people that are from different circles and, and seeing different perspectives. One of the faults that I would see sometimes is when I was a young cop throughout the, the tenure of my career, most of the cops and John, you probably agree with this. They start to, their circle starts to become all cops. Their friends are cops. They marry cops. Uh, their brother-in-law's a cop that follows a cop, right? And and that's that becomes I, it, it's it's unfortunate, right? You say, well, they p people like, would invite you to go somewhere, like, well, that's a cop bar, and this and their circle starts to become just cops. And I would say, listen, don't let this define you. You need to people, you need to you know be friends with people of all different walks of life and and hear different perspectives because you're not going to be a cop forever. And it's funny, it's interesting what you said, right? Because you said the citizens kind of like a dirty word, but we're people, right? Whether we're cops or not, we're always going to be people, but we're people of society, you know? And that's, that's the part that John and I have been arguing is that we have been treated differently with, uh, by the, you know, with the attacks that we've had, we feel we're part of media. We've been attacked by the police department and no one cares about our concerns. Other media personnel have been attacked and they, they show the compassion, but they don't see us as people. They just see us as cops. So, And I love the fact that even the stuff that you agree or disagree, you see us as brothers, man. I, I see you as the same way. So I, I love the mindset that you have. So with this movement, I'm curious to ask you, would you be considered or would you consider it to run for office one day, being a, someone that supports We Are The People movement, would you run for office even though that is part of government? Okay. So what what I'm, what I would like to, to do is to just try to reflect what every man's responsibility as a as a patriotic American. I just want to lead by example. So I'm I'm just one of many small part, big picture like you guys. Right. And we're all adding a, a recipe to the soup. And I'm I'm with a crew of people that are upstanding patriotic Americans that want to uphold our freedom and make sure our freedom never gets atrophied from government. So I, I don't have any uh, aspirations of doing that i have nothing wrong with that i think it's an honorable thing um i like brother john matlin john matlin uh ran um but i i, I do believe even brother john matlin I, I bought the books for i would love for, to sit down with him and maybe we'll do something together where we all learn together we all build um but until this system the people that are running or don't know their rights or, or learn their rights and get educated that's the only way we're going to fix this so I, I hope that I'm just reflecting what my neighbor goes. OK, he's working. I got to work and less and less about a, a leader and more about we the people. It's it, the power is literally when we all do it together. That's where the power is at, guys. Oh, yeah. Listen, so I know that, you know, I know our time's limited today and, and we've been going, <laughs> you know, and, and, and this is a lot, dude. Honestly, it's a lot to take in. It's It's a lot. So I think that you should definitely come back on. And we should have more of these conversations, but break it down by issues, by specific issue. And like, let's, let's do things like that. But I also think you got to come on sometimes, too, because we just need another set of eyes sometimes to look at these videos and stuff like that. And just give your honest opinion. What do you see? What you know, what do you what you what do you think's right when it comes to like policing and stuff like that? You know, I, I, I you know. I don't want to live in an echo chamber either. And either does Eric. So like we, you know, we, we, we always, you know, and you see what we do. We, we talk to everybody. We don't care yeah. what your opinion is. You know what I mean? Like what we want to hear. It. 
I want to um, hear. It, you know? So, like, you know, we, we'd love to have you back on. You know, it's, it's an honor that you came on here. It was an honor to be on your show. I, I know Eric feels the same way. Sal feels the same way. You know, and we definitely look at you as a brother, and 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 we look at you not as a citizen anymore. I'm not going to say that. <laughs> but a living soul. <laughs> yeah. you know, hey guys, thank, thank you so much, man. And uh, honestly, um, I'm really looking forward to the to the future work that we're doing. Um, I I am glad that you guys are open minded to this stuff because believe it or not, um, I do believe this country pulls through. I believe in I believe in the idea of freedom. Um, the forefathers, once again, there's no idols, there's no heroes. These are complex men. Uh, there are many different stories, Masons and all that. And I don't get caught up with any of that. Just like Trump. I have a healthy relationship looking at Trump. He's not my hero. He's not my savior. I don't have a blanket that says Trump on it. Uh, you know, it, it, the idol worship has to stop. We, we all have this, the creator created us. We are the creation. And once we realize that and we step into that power, this this whole country will change in a decade's time, and I'm excited for that. I'm looking forward to uh, stepping with men like yourself, alpha men like yourselves that are willing to learn and build this country back up. I'm looking forward to you it, know. Guys. You know, sometimes at the mis mis uh, the misconception is that you know, especially with myself, people like I'll think you know that I'm going to be very singular when it comes to the mindset that well, I'm only going to deal with people in society that never been arrested and have this ideology that people that I associate with have to be the most perfect human beings. And I've said this to you offline, I mean this. The most perfect human beings I've found are the ones that went through struggles in life. And I and I really do believe that people deserve a second chance, sometimes a third chance, and that means being arrested. John was arrested, you were arrested, uh, and you've, you've done some time, and you've paid your debt to society. And with those struggles, you become the person that you've become today. And I'm serious, I mean it, you are a brother, John's a brother. I, I'm, I'm so glad to know you guys and, and know people like you that have such a great mindset. And what makes me so proud and why I want to associate with people like you is that you have a stance. Sometimes, you know, John and I joke around and people don't get to see this offline. And, and I love John for this. And you say it before, we agree on most things, but sometimes we'll have little disagreements and we both are willing to stand in our positions and actually have opposition on, 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 on different topics. But yet we still consider each other br brothers and friends. And that's where the real love comes in the truth, where we can be honest with each other and say, no, I don't agree with your, with your assessment. I don't agree with your assessment. So th that's what makes me so proud. So Mighty Fuzz, it's always so awesome having you on here. Please tell everyone where they can find you, where they can see your show, and, uh, and how they can get in contact with you. Appreciate it. Sure. Sure, brother. And, and thank once again, thanks for having me, guys. Uh, you guys are really killing it, bro. Uh, my my Twitter is at Mighty Fuzzcast, at Mighty Fuzzcast. Uh, my IG is at Mighty Fuzz Young and also at Mighty Fuzz Podcast. I'm on Rumble at Mighty Fuzz Podcast. I'm at TikTok at Mighty Fuzz Podcast. I'm brand new on a lot of these pages, and we're just trying to get the word out there. Once again, um, I have a I have a group that we roll with. Uh, these are the most selfless people. I can't wait to introduce you. Uh, my sister Joy was on the spaces with you guys at the end. She's also one of the six um, that I, I'll just end on this. We currently have Alvin Bragg and Eric Adams in court now. We, the people of New York, have the five, six New Yorkers have taken them to court with no lawyer. Uh, and, and we're very excited where we're trying to get judgment on that. If we don't get the judgment we, we want, we, are upholding the oath, right? We're doing the process. We will go to the Supreme court and this is the process, the genius process that was created for us guys. Um, yeah, uh, just some last words. If you guys don't mind, uh, we, we have, we have a real opportunity at, uh, people waking up, uh, the election is literally in November. And we got to I just want to take this second as people who love this country. And I know there's a lot of people that are watching this. Some may agree with what I said. Some might not. But I just want to ask you, if you truly love this country, are you going to wait until November and hope they don't steal the election again? Is that patriotic? And if you honestly in your heart know what I'm saying to you, I'm speaking to your heart right now, then it's it's your responsibility as an American to get involved locally. Thanks for having me, guys. I appreciate you guys. Outstanding. Anytime. I can't wait to have you on here again and again. I agree with John. You're another great set of eyes from the from the perception of a, I'm sorry, not a citizen, but, you know, 
We the people. Love it. <laughs> I'm saying. No, I'm about to go in my car without a license and drive without a license. <laughs> <laughs> I'm about so to go to a local prison right now. Yo. Yo, thank you guys. I honestly I appreciate your time. Appreciate your time, guys. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Mighty Fuzz Young. We'll be back at you. Law enforcement professionals dedicate their lives to serving and protecting our community. But who's protecting their financial futures? That's where Laid Law Blue comes in. Our wealth management platform is specifically designed for the law enforcement community. Laid Law Blue is a division within Laid Law Wealth Management run by retired New York City detective John McDermott. His status as a retired detective uniquely positions him to establish a deep connection between Laid Law Blue and the law enforcement community. Our platform is easy to use and provides a range of financial services, including investment management, retirement planning, and insurance solutions. With Laidlaw Blue, you can secure your financial future and provide for your loved ones. Our team of experienced financial advisors understands the unique challenges and opportunities that law enforcement professionals face. We're here to help you navigate the complexities of financial planning, and achieve your goals. Laidlaw Blue, secure your financial future today. Book a meeting using the QR code displayed or call us directly on 888-901-BLUE. That's 888-901-BLUE.